out there in comic book land. My name is George Serrano, a.k.a. The Don, and if you're listening to this, you can only be here for one reason, and that's a brand new episode of the Major Issues Podcast, brought to you by Comic Book Click. And as you know, I am never alone, so sir, please introduce yourself. Ooh, I am, as usual, your Cloudus Maximus. Cloudus Maximus is here in studio, and we wanted to wrap up November, talking about the 5th, the 5th of, of November. November. Remember, remember. remember. <laughs> there you go, right? Every time you hear that, now you're going to be thinking, remember, remember the 5th of November. Uh, but I'm kind of burying the lead here. We're here to review V for Vendetta, the 2005 feature film based on the graphic novel written by the great Alan Moore, the genius behind The Watchmen. Or I think it's just Watchmen. I think you get in trouble if you say The Watchmen. Shh. We can bleep it. Uh, somebody edited that out. Uh, Watchmen, Killing Joke, amongst other things. But uh, Cloudus Maximus, this was your first time watching this film. Yes. And I think it's important to note that because we're going to be getting some genuine reactions from you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But overall, how did you feel about it? Um, it was a ride. I, um, I've seen this movie pretty late. It came out in what? 2005. 2005. Yeah. So um, about... 13 years later. <laughs> that's, that's sometimes. That's sometimes. You know, but I so. think it allows you to make your own opinion about it, right? Because yes, definitely. Because people are not uh, screaming. I mean, I'm pretty sure you've seen that mask before. Yeah, I've seen it everywhere the, before. The Guy Fawkes mask uh, blew up. Um, Anonymous uses it mm-hmm. now, and that's like a real legit yeah, like, religion kinda like thing, yeah. evolution, uh, you know, group that's trying to start a revolution, supposedly. The revolution. Uh, it's become the face of, of, you know, anarchy and revolutions and stuff so you i know you've seen the iconography of the book and the movie before yes but with the fresh eyes on it how'd you feel um it was a ride i um granted it came out before a lot of superhero movies now yeah you know what i mean so um i've i have this expectation of what i think is going to happen next Okay. Because of these movies, yeah. So, um, thinking that this movie was gonna go one way while I was watching right before that thing happened, you know, um, it was kind of like, huh, you know. So, um, I'm glad for that. It was actually refreshing, honestly. So, I I rewatched it. It's been some time since I watched it, uh, only because I feel like a lot of that movie, um, it. I think that that twist is uh, that there's a twist in the film mm-hmm. that happens. Um, and I think that that carries a lot of the weight of the movie. I think there's two twists: one, the cover up, right, and, right, right, and, right, um, and uh, the other, the other one. And so I think that once you know those things, it's kind of a different experience. Mm-hmm. Um, but I found myself enjoying it again, and I found myself thinking, like you say, like this was a film that came out way before. Uh, like the Dark Knights of the right, world, right, right, right. The, the uh, even before the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and yet it still it felt like it got the ideas of the hero, even even as flawed as yeah, he and, is, and even watching it still got you thinking about these revolutions and changes and government. Right, right. You know what I mean, well, that seems to be the big bad in this mm-hmm. film. Um, I uh got really, really curious, and I decided that it would be a good idea if I read the comic, read mm-hmm. the graphic novel written by Alan Moore. And um, in reading it, in reading it, watching this film, and thinking about things like Watchmen, that whole big government thing is an issue for him. You know? Uh, he doesn't like the idea... He I honestly must believe that um, the more control we give our government, you know, the more that they will take, and eventually mm-hmm. we'll all be... Um, in societies like the one portrayed in V for Vendetta or that whole idea like who watches the Watchmen like we're so quick to give our power up to superheroes but mm-hmm. then who's checking on them when they want it out and they're doing uh, crazy stuff like that but I I really liked uh, the comic and there's a lot of it a lot of the big points of the comic and the film remain intact but what I also found that was very interesting is um, Alan Moore also wrote League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and he you know, that got turned into a film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sold the rights to that, and uh, he hated the film. Yeah, and, uh, I, I actually heard that more about, about the movie. <laughs> yeah. And so, since then, he's denounced, like, all the all the um, films that are adapted from his work. And he says that 
he wanted comic books to almost stand out in its own genre. That when he wrote Watchmen and he wrote V for Vendetta, it was to do things that movies couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And so he actually thought that he was writing the unadaptable. Like he was writing it in a way that there's no way they could make this a movie. To the point that when they do Watchmen, you have to do a shot for a shot. Exactly how it is in the comics. In the comics. To, to, to portray it the way it is because that's how, you know, that message and that story is delivered. Um, and so it's weird that the, I, I know of him and his works through film. The one thing that he didn't want to be the passageway. Mm -hmm. But it did lead me eventually to these books, which are masterpieces. Um, but they definitely... He definitely sits on one side of how he feels about the government. You know? That's definitely um, going on uh, throughout majority of his works. But, yeah, you, you got this film here starring Hugo Weaving as V. Hugo Weaving also was Red Skull, as you know. Mm -hmm. And Agent Smith. So, you know, all, he got all his uh, credentials. Uh, in sci-fi comic books, new one. I, um, I, I also knew I in, that voice. <laughs> yeah, also in Lord of the Rings. My man's been doing some work. Captain. <laughs> yes, my man's been doing some work. And Natalie Portman, who, um, besides being Queen Amadala, <laughs> is Jane Foster in the Thor mm -hmm. series. Even though they broke up, but I think they're gonna get back together. I'm it was a mutual dumping. Yeah, exactly. It was mutual, guys. But. uh when I was reading the comic, I got a, a real Batman vibe. The at the 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 hiding in the darkness, mm -hmm. just coming out. Um, how do you feel about the design of V? And one thing to note: the book never tells you that that mask. Well, like it doesn't start off like how the movie starts off, where it says you know that there was this guy named Guy Fox who tried to blow up Parliament, mm -hmm. and they caught him. And uh, you know, he was trying to start a revolution, and they caught him. And so this guy wears that mask that supposedly the shit, you know, looks like Guy Fox, the guy who did all this. Right. Um, what do you think about that whole getup, the whole uh, wig, uh, cape? It's it's funny because now that you say um, you said you mentioned bats. You yeah. know, I, I know him like that. Yeah. You, you know. Um, Brucey Woosey. I got. Um, That's what he lets me call him. I I get the vibe, but I feel like it's com it's its own entity yeah in a sense you know what i mean um even in the the hiding in the dark or hiding in plain sight so to speak when you when you look at things like watchmen mcu uh stuff uh dcu where do you see a character like this sitting although this is under the vertical imprint of mm -hmm. dc's you know dc had their own adult line or their own you know line on the side that they let creators create their own content and stuff and uh that's where viva vendetta sits it sits under dc's vertical imprint um but where do you see that character sitting amongst those group of heroes? Do you see um, it's, him agreeing it, with any, uh, it, any anyone we know? Or, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's it's funny because uh, um, it's, the comic just so had that, that run, right? Yeah. That was it. Yep. Um, and after watching the movie, because I, I haven't read any of the, um, of the comics. Right. After watching the movie, I kind of wanted, you know, more and... Or because I knew it was just off of that that run that it had in the comics, right? I kind of wish there was more after that. Uh, Granted, that, that's that, interesting. No, I, I get what you're saying because when I saw it, I didn't know it was a comic, and that's what I was and, just and about so, to say too. And so I thought that it was that was just the ending. That's how the mm -hmm. movie ends. I didn't expect it to be a V for Vendetta too. I thought, okay. That's it, but because you knew it was a book, and none of these books really end, right? Nothing right, 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 to the point right, that exactly. Watchmen is getting, you know, through Doomsday Clock is getting a sequel in a in a kind of ways. Uh, the idea that this uh, V for Vendetta story would be ending is kind of shocking. No, I, I completely get that. I get that. So it's hard for you to think of them. Yeah, him alongside it def us. definitely is because um, he could pop I, up in Gotham. I, I think actually, I, I like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see him popping up in Gotham. I actually, I I like them a lot. I. I like him honestly. Um, I, I, this is probably because I, I kind of want more from from a man V. Yeah, you know. So um, I think that it's, it has a lot to do with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's the most spoiler free we're gonna get. I think it's time to d d dive deep into spoilers um, because it's apparent that this film is really like 
just a battle of two ideas. The idea, well, yes, this film is a is a battle of like almost Nazism, right? Mm. Like this idea that you know you can't be gay or you can't be Muslim or you can't be this or that, and um, they'll lock you away and um, torture you, kill you. And that they're trying to preserve purity and all this other kind of stuff. Um, the book was more about like V was kind of a he was an anarchist, mm-hmm. so he wasn't really trying to build a revolution. Like if people got, he was trying to yell at people to you know figure out what's going on. But he was just he would kill good and bad alike um, in the comic, which was kind of like weird because the only time I've ever seen him was in this film. Right. But I did appreciate the fact that he would kind of went harder in the comic, but. The film, the reason why the film is uh, differs originally is because the film reflects what we were going through. Uh, yeah, America. I was going to say, I feel like it was more just, justif- everything was just more justifiable in the film than it was in the comic. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the film, we we had just gone through 9-11 in 2001, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We start going to um, uh, countries like Iraq, Afghanistan. Um, war is breaking now. We signed the Patriot Act, which was a big deal because it supposedly allowed the government to, um, you know, do deep surveillance on everyone at the same time, uh, to the point that things are still coming out about them listening to phone records. Right, right. And, you With know, driving in the vans and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And all that, like the camera on your phone and the camera on your laptop and who knows, you know, uh, what the government can pull and, Big database banks somewhere right. in the in the desert where they're saving up all our stuff. I mean, we didn't have curfew. No, we didn't. <laughs> but it's this idea that we started to allow. The reason why people think the Patriot Act passed is because people were so scared of nine eleven and the effects of uh, that terrorist act that we were willing to surrender the freedoms that we had, so long as the government kept us safe. Right. Right. As long as the government kept us safe, then we would be. Uh, almost um quick and free like you you know like you're gonna you're gonna watch out for us you're saying that if we let you listen to every phone conversation mm-hmm. that we'll never get another terrorist attack again right you know ultimately like, if you the if, trade, if the government is in control then they must at least have our back or have our interests in yeah. mind yeah so um that well, that's the initial trade. That's what that's the idea. <laughs> right, yeah, right, right. Because Alan Moore doesn't believe that, um, and it, I mean, you don't really want to give up. Right. Much. I mean, I would have, I would have, I would have at least like to trade in V for Alan Moore. The movie could have been just been Alan Moore. Alan Havoc. Moore with, with Alan Moore with daggers <laughs> you and know? the mask. I dig it. No, I would watch that. Um, you so with. With uh, the Patriot Act and stuff like that and the surveillance, it, the idea is that um, in this world, which is happening in like the future, it's supposed to be the future, 2027, mm-hmm. right? In this world, a sickness broke out and um, it decimated, ap- well, a bunch of world, like world wars broke out. Mm-hmm. And then after uh, the society got beaten down on top of that, while they were trying to rise, rise back up in England, a sickness broke out. And um, it killed. It was killing people. With, uh, a water tank got. I mean, a water. Um, what's that? A reservoir mm-hmm. got contaminated. A school for uh, kids um, got contaminated. A bunch of people died. A lot of people died. And um, society looked for answers and looked for leaders. And a government rose up um, and basically now has this hold over England. And. Uh, that was, I think, the main, I think, comparison that they were trying to make over here. Where a lot of this stuff, if you're American and if you've lived in this country uh, for, you know, quite some time, a lot of this stuff speaks to you, right? When he mm-hmm. starts talking about, like, who's the people that are running things and whose interests they have at heart. And um, uh, how government, what is the line? Um, people should... People shouldn't be afraid of their governments. Governments should, should be, afraid be afraid of their, of their people. people. Right? When he says things like that, people are like, oh, yeah, like, things have turned around mm-hmm. when you think of the idea of... And with things kind of, like, not happening that way, but being so iffy. Right. It can, a movie could come out today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. And I think that's what's the craziest thing about it. While this movie, uh, they 
they I think it's not a direct adaptation. I think it was inspired by uh Adam Moore's work. Mm-hmm. So it's not a direct, you know, shot for shot remake. Right, right. But from the ideas there, they were able to tweak certain things and apply it to now. The last decade and a half or so, right? Um Whereas when he wrote it, he wrote it just as a criticism of some things that were going on in England and how he felt it would eventually get, you know, with the surveillance and the, these uh, secret cops and um, all this kind of stuff. It's weird because in the comic, the main guy, the guy that kind of looks like Hitler mm-hmm. um, in the film, Adam Sutler, mm-hmm. he's um, he has a computer that like dictates how they're going to run like hmm. everything and it's called fate uh i think it's like f-a-t-e and he's kind of like in love with it but v messes with it to right. kind of like mess with him um so i think that was another big departure from um the film because I, I didn't remember that computer there but when you see v for the first time he pops up he saves evie mm-hmm. and he gives this long v speech <laughs> what do you think about that <laughs> I knew I knew it was ultimately leading to something. <laughs> yeah. So I was just um waiting to see what I was like. What's your point? Right. What are you, right. you going to do? <laughs> yeah. And they were on the on the rooftop. Yeah. Took it to the rooftop. And she told. So oh, he was like, "Yeah, I want to show you. Yeah, something. I want to show you something." I think he asked her music. Yeah. Or, he uh, like he like music. Yeah. <laughs> and then he just started to perform. How did that first scene for you play out? Because, yeah, yeah, V saves this. Um, in the comics, Evie is a woman who, um, I think she works in, in ammunitions. And she's so poor that she tries to go prostituting for the first time. Mm-hmm. And while going to go prostituting for the first time, she's all nervous. And she, you know, tries to hook up with some guy. That guy ends up being a cop. And the cop threatens to, like, sexually assault her and mm-hmm. kill her alongside another guy. And then the same setup. Right, right, right. Cop. Oh no, I didn't mean to. Yada yada, and then everything. You'd have to think he showed up on his way to go do his thing. Right, but that. (laughs) Oh, but that begin. The very, very beginning part is actually in both the comic and the film that I really liked, which is them both getting ready. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I I like that. I don't know how how I even glossed over that. That is what I really like too, because at one point I thought they were at least in like. Maybe like the same room or in the room across from each other. Yeah. You know, so th- that was but shop for uh, shop. Her putting on his, her um, shoes, him putting on his boots. His wig. Yeah, his, his wig. Nice her. <laughs> and his mask. You get the POV shot of him putting on his mask, which is cool. Um, but yeah, he comes out of nowhere. He gives this like Shakespearean speech. Then he just kills <laughs> a, a bunch of, uh, of guys that are standing right there. And he's like... Uh, Come with me, basically. And she's like, "Nah, I'm good." At first, but you kind of saved my life, so I'm, I'm gonna see I mean, what's up. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I he seemed crazy, but she she still goes with him and stuff. But then he when he brings her up to the top, he's like, "Yeah, um, you know, do you like music? I, you know, can you hear it?" And she's like, "No, I can't." And then all of a sudden, out of all the um, nationwide speaker systems, the emergency speaker systems, they start blaring this classical music, and then. A building explodes in the in the background. Mm-hmm. The crescendo. What did you think of that act of terrorism, basically, <laughs> in that moment? I was like, as he performed, the buildings started to explode on yeah. cue. So I kind of thought that was that was well, not cool, but the um, the fireworks were nice. Oh no, definitely. <laughs> but I'm saying like this was like the first introduction that this right. guy is steps ahead of. I mean, yeah, I was of, just about to say that. It, um, I'm, I guess part of his master plan. The yeah. start of his master plan, yeah. Because um, he's uh, because obviously remember remember the fifth of November, and I think what was it was it that same night that he said a year from a year from now a he's year gonna from do now? something else. Uh, I think what's also kind of cool is that when you first watch the film, at least at least to me, it feels as if V is just a vigilante who's walking the streets, right? right? Like he's on patrol. He sees this. He deals with it. it Dealing is it with is. injustices right. and whatnot. But it turns out that V um, is somebody that just popped up on the cops' radar mm-hmm. because noticeable people are being killed. Um, and he's he's gunning for, like, big people in the government, like that guy, uh, uh, Prothero. Um, what do you think about that, like, kind of like Fox News? Um, <laughs> 
um, fake news kind of uh, kind of <laughs> guy who's out there. And what is it? Uh, England will prevail. Winners win and losers lose. And uh, <laughs> that yeah, was but, very that was very uh, foxy. Yeah, he's actually in the comics as well. They call him the voice of fate because people every day listen at a certain time, right? And he basically dictates like the state of the country, how everything's going on, regardless of his, whether or not he's telling the truth. Um, they believe him. They're they're sworn to believe him because he's he's supposed to be the voice of, I think yeah, the voice of fate. And so, um, but uh, when I, he when he gets taken out of that position, it's a big deal yeah. because, and I it, it's cool because in the comic they even say like, the second they hear somebody else's voice, they're gonna know that we're something's up. And if we start lying about that, they're gonna start realizing that we not in control about like that. Something's going on, yeah. And you see that panic on Sutler's face right at certain times, right? Where he's like, I don't care what you have to do. You need to just shut this down because it's getting bigger and bigger. The people. But it starts off with Prothero. Prothero is the guy with the on the all the pills, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He has mad pills in, in, the, his, in uh, his um in his bathroom, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he comes straight for him, and in uh, the shower, and gets him, uh, not worrying about the oh another kind of stray from the classic superhero trope. This guy doesn't really care about killing. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about killing for the sake of for the sake of his vengeance, his vendetta? <laughs> um. I get. I mean, one, he's he's determined. Two, um, he's doing whatever he believes it takes to get his point across. Yeah. Um, another thing is, did, I, did you? Here's a here's a, here's a better question. I'm sorry for interrupting, mm-hmm. but were you always on his side? Was there ever a point where you're just like, what is this all that? What is all this about? Like uh, you're kind of going hard. It was a little. It was a little was, 50, 50, maybe sometimes sixty forty because I kind of got where he was coming from. Yeah. Because I. Uh, he, he. I want to say he had the people's, and in, not the int- real interests, but the the. I want to say their. The, I want to say wow. Because of, you're saying because of the ideas that he spoke, it made it seem like he he cared more about society he, than he than he like than just killing. Right, everybody. because you have to you have to think it's all about control. Right. For the, at least for the for the government. Yeah. And which in this universe calls is called Norse fire. Right, right, Norse right, right. Fire is the name of the, the and uh, they kind of like dictate as far as everything goes from people knowing what's what. You yeah. know what I mean. So, um, and I, in a sense, I think he just wants to give people more of a voice or more of control for themselves. Yeah, break through that, break yeah. through that wall that the government so, created. Um, I kind of felt where he was coming from, so it's like that's what I, where the sixty forty comes in. Okay, so I'm, I'm like. Uh, Okay, I, I dig it. Just like that. Oh, I was just supposed to do that. So, um, in the comics, Prothero is also a big doll collector. And so, um, I think they mention it. I, or probably not. You, you know, the shadow, what does he call it? The shadow, his house is called the shadow hall. It's, oh, <laughs> um, she, he tell, he tells her too. Yeah, it's called the Shadow something. I'm gonna find that right now. This is live here on the. Th- what did you think of his of his house when you saw it? It was very. It was it was very underground, so. it, his feng shui was pretty nice, but I knew everything in, in the house was stolen. Yes, <laughs> right off oh, the so, bat. Oh, so you know, so they do mention like that some of this stuff she's never seen, like right. The Shadow Gallery is what it's called, mm. which makes sense because it's a gallery of all this stuff. In the comic book, you're, it's explicitly said that when um, the government takes over, mm-hmm. they like burn art and albums, and so like right. by by this forward time in the future, Evie is young; she's like sixteen, mm-hmm. so she um, doesn't remember like half whole, of, yeah, whole right, right. parts of culture because they've been erased uh, because uh, of everything that happened with. Um, and some of that you would have to stuff. believe. He has, and he and he, may, he probably has fine <laughs> right. recollection of that, and that 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 will, is what would get you angrier, um, because uh, in the film, Evie's parents were taken as well, mm-hmm. uh, so they were freedom fighters who remembered a better time, you know, and mm-hmm. it's got to be so weird, right, to be the before and after, like to wake up in a society that's already been uh, taken over completely by a uh, fascist regime r- regime or dictatorship. It's got to be an easier understanding of like, well, this is just what we do. Then, if you lived your whole life free, 
Right. And then and all of then a sudden, to that transition of more cameras yeah. and more, you know, and it happens gradually. I mean, this camera's everywhere now. And sometimes when I when there's not a camera, I'm like, that's weird. <laughs> like, I'm so expecting there to be like a little ball in every corner of every place I go. But uh, it wasn't Prothero's death that bugged me. That 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 got me. It was the um, the botanist, the 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 scientist. But we'll get to her in a second. Right, right, yeah, yeah. that was that, yeah. What happens in the film happens in the comics where he, she eventually asks um, V if she can uh, help. Okay. And V's like, oh yeah, I got you. And they do the scheme with the priest. Okay. Did you feel like that was a that was cliche or at all? Or do you feel like that was that was just um not really because okay so the movie came out in two thousand five two thousand five yeah and you hear it, and by then but well by now you've heard of that kind of thing okay you know what I mean yeah. so um I guess in this era it would be cliche like if a brand yeah, new movie exactly, came out with it yeah you kind of be like oh okay they've done this to death so at the time like, so at the time if I'd have seen the movie then I'd have been like huh uh, but it's like I, I see it now um. I've seen it already on the news and stuff like that right. a little bit. So um, I don't want to say it's cliche because I got, I got it when I seen it. So I just I thought it was clever. Yeah. That's what I want to say. Um, in the comic as well as the film, he said they go up to him and they say, hey, we've got you know your package or whatever, but there was a problem at the agency. Um, she's going to be a little older than uh, you, know, you usually than you, get. Yeah. And he goes, um, I hope, hopefully not too old. And I'm right. like, I was like, what? Are you, bugging? Like, oh. Are you bugging here? Um, they would call it in the book. Other people called it him eating veal, which what? is which is uh, you know baby deer. Right, meat. right, right. Uh, so like everyone knew it was going down. Mm-hmm. Um, in the comic, they catch V almost doing like almost. You know how they end the film? There's a lot of times where they get close, mm-hmm. and he's already just done it. Mm-hmm. In the comic, they get close to doing it because. They the the people there's people surveilling you at all times and they got bored and they decided to tune in because they knew that at this time on this day wow. the priest was gonna be screwing some wow. young young chick and they wanted to hear what was going on but in the um, film she uses this as a chance to escape right to escape how do you feel about that how do you feel um, about her being like I thought to listen be, to be honest I thought it was <laughs> uh, to be honest when that happened I thought it was actually part of the plan oh, okay. So her saying all that and revealing that to him, I thought, okay, he does just to part like of the buy plan. time, like, yeah, or to buy time, or to like to get, like I like I, I I knew the trope. I, I thought the trope was gonna be okay. She he, he's not gonna believe her anyway. So when I'm watching it, I'm just I'm just like okay, everything's just going according to plan. Yeah, because I I would think like she was down with the cause by now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, when that does happen, I'm just like okay. Everything's just according, going according to plan. Yeah, but it turns out she was just trying to run. Yeah, she was, she trying, was to, just trying to get away. And so get then away. when she did run, I was just like, oh, she was serious. Yeah. <laughs> um, v in the comic kills the uh, priest with a cyanide flavored communion wafer. Wow. That's deep. Yeah. And he <laughs> says, I am the devil. I'm here to do the devil's work. Mm-hmm. And he, uh, he kills the priest. He can get dark. That is that that mask is so emotionless, right? right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And you don't yeah. even see eyes. It's so weird because he can look so sweet and so sinister, mm-hmm. depending on what he's doing and what he's and, saying, and the 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 timbre of his voice and stuff. So great credit to uh, Hugo Weaving. I heard that they eventually had to do all the dialogue in post. Initially, they put like a, a mic in the mask, in the mask, and it was trash. And then they tried to put like a mic on his hairline, oh, and like it was like behind it, I yeah, guess, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> behind his bangs or something. <laughs> and uh, it didn't work. How do you feel about? Let me get this actor's name because I want to get some credit in here. How did you feel about uh, Stephen Ray as Eric Finch, the the main? Detective, the detective, the detective that I, was stressing basically. I, stressing I, I thought, honestly, re- uh, a little relentless. Um, no quit. He was just, he was just in it to win it. To be yeah. honest, you know what I mean. So, um, and a lot of that is like you can tell when it's almost like a little bit cliche. Like I'm not gonna stop until it, I every, get our it, guy. Yeah, I get our yeah. guy. So, um, sometimes the legitness is I feel like is 
hard to portray. And I'm a fan of legitness as long as I'm able to like feel it. Yeah. And I, I, I felt that. I felt that. I've actually seen him in a couple of other movies too. So yeah, going a, into the movie, he was already a familiar face. So yeah, he's a big, well-known. Um, so me actor. getting into the loop with him wasn't even wasn't hard to do. So I was I'm I'm glad for legitness because yeah. once it's not, if it's just a regular old trope, I'm just. And I also think that also like with the film, splitting the time up between you know Evie and V and then the the cops and what's actually going on with the villain, mm -hmm. um, they don't do that a lot anymore. They let the villain like do because they don't really want you to let know too much of what the villain's plan is mm -hmm. but in this film it's important to let you know that the villains are all tripped up yeah. they're all <laughs> falling on their feet because no matter what they do V's got the next plot and the next plan um, we are skipping over the whole uh, broadcast he shows up yeah. at the TV station with dynamite strapped to him demanding to get put on um, to play a uh, uh, mini disc mm -hmm. you saw that little mini disc um, and which displays basically a uh, message where he says that the government has has done wrong and has taken up too much power. But that basically it's our fault. And so we need to get up, be better and, uh, you know, take back and take back. How do you feel about that whole setup? Him, him. At this point, he's blown up a building. He's killed the voice. And now he's uh, now this. Um, he's the man's got some serious bollocks. He does. On him. Um, That's a word we hear I a lot was, in this film. I was, I liked the the broadcast, but even more than what I liked is when he dressed everybody up in his mask inside of that office. Yeah. So I thought that was, I thought that was kind of real smart. So when the first dude came came out and said not to shoot him, he, he got, got shot. He got, <laughs> he got gunned down. <laughs> which happens in the film. I mean, in the, in the comic, it's it's a it's a, like a well known. It's 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 the host of that show. Mm -hmm. It's the first. It's the only one guy. One yeah. guy comes out. In the mask, and they just riddle him with bullets, wow. and then when they take off the mask, it's not him. And somebody else that got out. Um, uh, and you have a problem with him staying under the mask, huh, V? Um, a, li whole a little bit because I'm used to because uh, the I'm used to the whole reveal reveal by now. Oh, I am Iron Man, or you yeah, know, I'm Spider Man. Um, how do you feel? Like, do do you feel the character would have been more rooted if he would if you would have gotten like a first last name? Nah, kind of deal. I um, I'm a fan of, uh, I'm a fan of his. This is what it is, and that's I, it. I'm an idea mm -hmm. that can be passed on. So um, the mask is what makes me the mask. Him b being behind the mask is what because you see the only reveal that you see is his hands. Yeah, and his and his hands are basically scorched earth. Yeah, and those things are burned. So um, but he's still making eggs. Yeah, he's still making eggs. But um, I like, I like not getting. Getting the reveal. I mean, I I get it because the man was gonna is he was he wanted to be a mystery anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's all right. I I could deal with that. And a lot of the movie talks about the idea that there's no point mm -hmm. in looking behind his mask, right? At one point, Evie tries to take it off, and he's like, "There's no point. Mm -hmm. I'm not who 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 you're gonna see when this mask comes off is not me." And um, I think that's deep. You know, they they this is I want to say the same because at here. that point, even if you take off the mask and you see him. You're still gonna see the mask, yeah. In a sense, I, I, that's what I think he wanted to basically say or put out. But it's funny because Batman Begins, I think, came yeah, come out came out the same year, and it, they both speak a lot about this idea that um, you could be more than, you know, more than just more than a man. You could be an idea. You can, you know, that's more powerful because they can catch on and be contagious, and. Um, we get that here. You get a little bit of that in the end of uh, in the beginning of Dark Knight, right, where people are actually dressing up as Batman. Mm -hmm. You have that in this film where people are dressing up as V. Mm -hmm. um, he's helping lead a revolution against uh, the people he feels are taking too much control. But let's talk about those roses and let's talk about that uh, that scientist. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that scientist because she changed her name. She knew. She yeah, knew. Yeah, she up. knew it was. Yeah, I was just about to say she knew it was. Up. At least she had the foresight to see what was coming eventually. <laughs> yeah, she changed her name, and um, but she, she stuck. She stuck around. Which, which, is, which is like, is, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> which is like you didn't go far. Like hide in plain sight. He was still able to find you. Um, in the film, it's bugged because I mean, the comic is bugged because they say like. It's it's almost the same thing happening where there's two things happening at the same time. 
one of the things is they're deciding in the comic to look up this whole Lark Hill place. Mm-hmm. And turns out everybody's dead. Every single person who's ever worked on this thing is dead. And um, they've all died in accidents. Right, right. Over oh, the last... like Coincidentally. Yeah, <laughs> over the last couple of years. So this is revealed a little earlier in the film. Um, I, mean, in the, I mean, in the comic. So you're already like, oh, snap. Because then it starts to play out that... Um, this is not a guy who just popped up on our radar. Or he, even though he just popped up on our radar, it's not like he just started. Right. He's been doing been this. Doing and it. that's why he can do things like blow up uh, Parliament or blow up the old Bailey because he um, has been doing this, been planning this. How do you feel about V being 10 steps ahead all the time? Um, I mean, to do something like that or start a, like a, a revolution in a sense. Yeah. Um. It makes sense to be ten steps ahead. Yeah. So that way you could be a- ahead of the the government. Right. You know what I mean. So um, for him to be te- ten steps ahead made sense. Um, it's just he got to know his way around if he pretty much taken out. Yeah. The government. <laughs> yeah, he's got to know where to hit him. Um, and that's why I think he goes to um get that broadcasted because of how much control. You know, it's it's kind of cliche, but it's true. How much control is in our media? If all our screens, regardless, right, laptops, cell phones, all of them, all of a sudden just randomly started displaying the same message with somebody claiming that they know how corrupt the government is and how we all need to fight back. We all got kind of an inkling of the kind of bad things our countries collectively, right, mm-hmm. or apart have done to maintain, you know, still being here. But... What if somebody can come out and confirm that? They say, I know, you know, this country's been up to no good and I know we can change it. I know we can lift it up from the bottom. Um, that's how revolutions are formed. Right. Um, and I we, mean, I mean, at least he, he knew he wanted to kickstart something. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. But the particular thing was he was always theatrical about it and he always left behind a Scarlet Carson rose. Mm-hmm. And so they gave it to the, the scientist lady like, hey. Uh, check out what you can find out about this rose and see what you can tell us. And sh- her face freezes up. Automatically, you know that something is up mm-hmm. with this. And um, through her, we are able to get a flashback sequence, right? Through her journal entries and stuff. Which I thought we were going to get because I always felt like something was missing. Some type of insight. There's a big chunk of <laughs> yeah. the story that's not, that's not being told. Uh, and so we find out that they had concentration camps. Mm-hmm. You know, when all this was going down and that they took the quote unquote undesirables and they kidnapped them and they tortured them. And some of them they did experiments on. And, uh, you know, they had five, I think five remaining mm-hmm. um, five. that survived. And they were marked. Each door was marked by Roman numerals and they were separated into each room. And the only person to la- last throughout all the stuff was the fifth. Yeah. The fifth. And so the you have um, that's. Where you get the V from, mm-hmm. uh, the Roman rule 5, standing for V, or V using it for V. And all of a sudden, one day, there was, an, what, there was an explosion, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And everyone had, they, they, you could just see that V's cell has been busted open. He's covered in fire, and she sees him, and she knows. And so, the woman has basically been waiting for him to show up at her doorstep and kill her. Because they lead you to believe that um, the only person that they the tests worked on were was him yeah but it just so happens that he got caught in the fire yeah an explosion how did you feel about their exchange so v shows up and he's like um she was like, very it was very slick because whatever yeah. he had done had already been done and when he told when he revealed that it was like oh he sneak past it yeah i think it's um i already killed you in your sleep yeah they they had minutes ago they had a pretty um I was like, oh, she's about to go any second now with the rose. <laughs> yeah. They had a pretty weird, um, they're just being like this odd, there's this odd calm conversation going on. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, he's there to kill her. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, she and, knows. And everybody, and I'm waiting for it to happen. Like, how? And at least up until this point, there's been a lot of anger with when he's doing this stuff, mm-hmm. right? There's been a lot of uh, sh- certainty. Like, he's been straight up gutting people and, and you know, uh, 
he, the way he kills Prothero in the shower, right? Yeah, that, get, basically them getting theirs in a sense. Right. So you think that if he does, if he's already over here and he's here to kill her, why is he? Why are they having this? Why is he? Yeah. Kind of conversation. Do you feel? Why is he being so tender? I did like. <laughs> I did like the line of like, uh, like, is it too late to apologize? Is it, yeah. Never, and he's like, it's never, too never late. too late. I did believe that. Yeah. I did believe that because I think also when you put that into the context that he already knew that he already did it. Mm -hmm. Like at this point, if it makes you feel better. Right. You know, uh, it might make me feel a little better, but a bit better, but not better enough to <laughs> so like, make nah. sure that you're still alive. <laughs> um, how do you feel about that line, that line drop of I already killed you? Oh, that was great. Cause sleeping. the whole time I'm just like, all right, all right. I'm, I'm, Trying to put myself. You thought in they were gonna shoes. throw down I'm like just, karate? No, karate. I just thought he was. What you gonna do? You gonna smother her with the pillow, choke her with the blanket? What? What you gonna do? Yeah. And then once he told, yeah, I already killed you ten minutes ago. I was like, what? Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. He gave her the slip in the. And he already told. Yeah, he injected her while she slept. Mm -hmm. And he already told her that uh, it would not. Um, it would hurt. Yeah, she she had asked. Is it gonna be painful? So he like, did. No. He did happen to give her some mercy. Um, in the. In the comic, same situation, mm -hmm. um, but they believe they start to believe that the the injections that they're giving him are um, making him crazy. Oh, which alludes to why he talks the way he talks right, now, right, 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 that kind right. of stuff, um, and that he, as like a as like a you know like let's like go to the yard for for jail like mm -hmm. like, like that gym or whatever <laughs> kind of stuff. They let him time. yes, they let him plant. Like the garden for the jail, and he would plant the Scarlet Carsons mm. there. So that's how she knew that he was leaving that the they road. Were that, okay. Yeah. Um, because he was the gardener and he planted the yeah, flowers. Yeah. Right. He loved those in particular. But he also would ask for specific gardening supplies mm -hmm. and keep them in his cell. Hmm. And he eventually ended up um, blowing up wow. out of the cell, creating mustard gas. Um, blowing his way out of the cell, and then she says, "You know, like he looked at me, and they say kind of in right, the right, with no like, eyes. He looked at me, and but with his eyes, yeah, like into my soul. But they were there, yeah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Um, and so they do paint that very scary picture of who V had to be, I guess, to break mm -hmm, out at mm -hmm. that point, which then shows you that at that point, when you when you reach that far into the origin, you get to a point of like, oh yeah, just kill everybody, right? You just, you get to that point of like." <laughs> Oh, it's one of these. It's like Kill Bill. You know what I'm saying? Like, go up the ladder, kill whoever you got to kill. Everybody that's involved, yeah. You know? you get to the main head honcho. Because it starts, to, it starts to come out that, yeah, that she worked for them. And that the um, the priest was on uh, the payroll. Mm -hmm. And that Prothero was... Making, he was, was making 200000 a month, bro. He was bro. making a lot what? of money. He was making a lot a of money. A month? Yeah. Yeah. He was making tons of, tons of cash. Um, and Prothero was like a general there. Right. And so it's like, okay, let's... Before let's start, he got a TV show. Let's start ticking off these blocks one by one um you get you see that v ends up sending boxes of masks mm -hmm. and um his uh, cowl cowl and stuff <laughs> to other people um i guess hoping to inspire them but like i said that mask has is all over now right, and right. it's so synonymous again with trying to overthrow some kind of oppression um i didn't think it would catch on that quick Right, but right. it's everywhere in all kinds. Well, you of, mean in the movie or in like? I guess in the real world, but right. I guess it. I guess we've always been a society that wants to kind of buck the trend, at least since the '90s, mm -hmm. right? The more information we find out, the more we feel like we need to push back on the things that are telling us our information. Right, and so I mean, you would. I mean, the movie was kind of the thing that pushed that into the. I want to say forefront. Yeah, as far as. Revolutions, and so maybe, <laughs> and maybe, so maybe, um, unironically, they created their own revolutions. You know, they or started their own revolutions, but you see that there's the little girl that starts to kind of attach to it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about her in a bit. Yeah, but um, that kind of sucked. But it sucked, but it happened. Yeah, yeah, it sucked, but it happens. But um, how did you feel? I guess we got to get to the point where we meet Gordon. Mm -hmm. Which was supposed to be the person that Evie, Natalie Portman's character, was supposed to be meeting when she got caught up with the police in the beginning of the film. They were supposed to be going on a date. Mm -hmm. He worked for the studio or whatever. And um, I suppose like, all girls do this, right? All young workers do this? Because she was like expected to go right. with him. And mm -hmm. they call him Daddy Dietrichs at one point. Like, oh, you went on a date with him? Like, like all the girls do or something? Daddy. And we find out that he's gay. Right. 
Right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, we well, find- she goes to hide out of his house, right? Yeah, and he's like, well, I can't be who I want to be. You know, we all wear our own masks. How do you feel around? How do you feel about him playing around with the whole idea that he's V? Oh, <laughs> like making the breakfast. I was. Like, yeah, it's funny because when I see him make the the same eggs. Yeah, um, the eggy I was in like, a basket. I was like, no way, dude. You ain't ain't no way you whooping that much butt and in that much shape. Yeah, looking like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny. And the, the height and all those things. I'm like, there's no way. How how are you gonna do it? But inspired by the conversation that he has with uh, Evie, who's talking about revolution and all this other kind of stuff, he that he shows her his whole memorabilia mm-hmm. of like illegal things. These are the <laughs> illegal things I'm not supposed to have, but I believe in like love and peace and everyone's equal. Um, and uh, that whole conversation, that whole review, inspires him to then rewrite the episode of his television mm-hmm. and so instead he makes it an entire gag about poking fun at the government and um v i felt it was very captain america punches hitler i thought it was uh too. which is funny because that movie comes out after this but what do you think about what what do you think about what uh gordon did would you have done the same thing do you think what it's followed kinda, is it's kind of i don't know man it's kind of it, yes and no it's deserved yeah but i don't think i would have uh, okay. cause I would have thought at least at some point that people would have, I mean, at least officials would have been coming after me in some type because of fashion. Because people argue this all the time. We do this. Cause with- he was telling her, I'm just going to be fine, fined and stuff like that or whatever, but my rating's going to go through the roof. Yeah. I was like, bro, living, living in that type of society? Nah, man. But I know something would have been, would have been made of this. We also live, least. we'd also live in a society that, um, where Donald Trump is constantly, right? On SNL, yeah, right. I just, well, somebody would have been stuff. knocking on my door. I would. But well, I think do you, where do you where does where do you draw the line on that? Do you think that parody should be a public figure? I mean, it could have been be? it could have been a par- it could have been a parody of sorts, but he he didn't have to go that hard. Yeah, <laughs> he gets shot in it, right? Yeah, Doesn't he it? does. He does. They I mean, both, I well, mean, they, they both do in a sense, you know, because there's two of them. Right. So I th- and I honestly believe. Right? I mean, what do, you, how, what do you think? That if you were to shoot a, a video where you were pretending to be the president and you got shot. Right. Or you were two versions of you were shooting at, at each other <laughs> or whatever the heck. I think they come for you. I yeah, think that, yeah. That, I, somebody's that, knocking they, on my door, Somebody's dude, knocking on your door. Without a doubt, somebody. And um, they say that the black bags, you know, that Creedy, mm-hmm. the other uh, fingerman, the black bags that he uses, you know, is reminiscent to what we saw was going on in Abu Ghraib, those um, prison prisoners, mm-hmm. where they were just having those black bags on their heads and taking those selfies. Remember right, that? right. Um, so we know that we've done it. So they were just connecting bits of the, our, our past around 2005 and what we were going through with um, the Patriot Act and Abu Ghraib and Iraq and 9-11 and, and making it this this stew. That and and was poor just, Evie, she had to go through that twice. Yeah, <laughs> going yeah, yeah. into the bed and seeing that happen again. Yeah, so um, they do. They come for him. He makes this whole fool of of uh, Sutler, who is the high chancellor of the North Fire Party, mm-hmm. which is uh, basically the party that runs the government. And um, I was like, "That's a good stunt double," but it's just him. I thought that was I thought that was like a lookalike or something that they used. Mm-hmm. They just straight up used the actor. <laughs> They just straight up uh, use um, dang, what is his name? My oh, uh, John Hurt. Oh, that John taking that the hurt. Sense. I know John Hurt. All right, all right. Yeah, he was in Harry Potter. All right, that makes sense. But anyway, then you got Creedy. How do you feel about old creepy Creedy? Creepy, 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 creepy. I mean, he was always he was creepy from the jump. His face creeped me out. And being His all, hair, yeah, being all stone cold and everything. I was like, show some emotion. Damn. And he seems to Stop like being so. And he was just angry throughout the whole movie. He, angry and afraid of the chancellor. Yeah, and he seemed to like um, arresting people. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I, I think, people I think a little too those, much. Putting those black bags on people. Could you see that happen? I feel like putting the black bags on people was his favorite thing to do. His favorite thing. He wakes up in the morning. <laughs> he counts his bags. So we're going to go get 10 people today. But that's what happens to Dietrich. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they grab up Evie. Evie tries to escape. And they grab through, her up. Through the window, yeah. And she gets got. And, they get, and she does get got. She definitely gets got. Because she wakes up in an interrogation room. And they're asking for the whereabouts of V. 
You were the one hanging out with V. Where is V? In the comics, they're showing her the footage of her prostituting. Wow. And so they're like, we got this. What are you going to... Right. You know, Even if you don't tell us, you're yeah, still in trouble. Yeah, exactly. So you're, you're not going anywhere until you let us know where V is. Um, and she fights it off, and they shave her whole head. I mean, granted, she still couldn't tell. No. She she didn't know. I mean, she, she's she been to the to the whole lair and whatnot, but she just doesn't know where it is. Yes, yes. So when 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 he's when she's in this prison, they shave her head, they torture her, um, all very like, I think emotional and shocking mm-hmm. scenes. I think uh, Natalie Portman had great hair, mm-hmm. and so when you, it doesn't look bad bald. Right, right, right. Right. It I doesn't... mean, I think that should be said. Nope. Natalie Portman, uh, you can rock the crew cut. Few few women can. I think you got it. Um, which I also think was a big deal. She was. Yeah, she had a lot of hair. She was known, in, <laughs> and but she was also known in Hollywood. So it was like, whenever one of those actresses decides to do that, like when Demi yeah, Moore cut her thing, hair yeah. for GI uh, Jane, it, it causes notice because it's like this role means this much to me that I'm willing to go mm-hmm. uh, this hard for it. Um, uh, the girl from Jumanji, Killian uh, Jacob, Killian. Oh my gosh. Dun dun. The actress that plays Nebula shaved her head, Karen Gillian, mm. for the role. Wow. When she first, when they were doing Guardians and stuff like that. I think now she... I didn't know that was... I think now she let her hair grow and they like pat it somehow. Right. But straight up she was like, I'm with it. I'm let's, doing it. Let's do this. So, um, yeah. I think Natalie Portman has a nice shaved head. Um, and we get an introduction to a brand new character named Valerie. Through a series of toilet paper... Uh, autobiography. Autobiography <laughs> situation. What do you think about the Valerie sequence? Um, it was. I think it was. I want to say it was kind of like a mirror, or not like a mirror, but to shed hope. Yeah. In the sense, um, I wanted. I wanted to know what that was all about. To be honest, I was hoping I'd get it somewhere down into the movie. Yeah. Um. But it was the only thing she she had in there at the time. Well, also we believe she was in there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we have um, Valerie. It seems to be another inmate inside the cell with Evie, who's passing her along notes um, and basically telling her her life story. Her life story, yeah. About how she was, um, she grew up and she was into girls, and the her first parents girl, disowned her yeah, and stuff like that. Her parents yeah. disowned her. And she eventually ended up just, uh, you know. I mean, I got the point. They didn't need to throw the baby picture in the trash. <laughs> Did she throw the baby picture in the trash? Yeah, they threw the baby. Wow. Her parents threw the baby picture in the trash. I don't think that happens in the comic, but yeah. she, it, you get the same. It's the same letters right. and stuff for the most part. Um, but she ends up becoming an actress, you know, despite everything that's going on, and she is a lesbian. Identifies as a lesbian, and um, she gets into a relationship with a woman. And she falls in love, and they're together for three years. But then a bunch of wars break out, and they start to start bagging people for being gay or black or Muslim or just different. And her wife gets taken, which I thought was pretty heartbreaking. And then, um, so heartbreaking that she's just done with it. Yeah, she's all she knew they were coming. Distraught. She was just there that when look they on her face when her, she's yeah, on her like, couch is like maybe whatever. I was waiting for y'all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And what took you so long? She gets the similar treatment, where her head is shaved, mm-hmm. and she's um, she is injected with all kinds of experimental stuff. And in the film, I think what's kind of weird and also kind of sad is they they've shown her twice before in the film before you see these autobiography scenes mm-hmm. when when you're doing the when they're doing the diary read, she's walking down the hall. When they're showing the bodies getting dumped in the oh thing, yeah they show her but I you don't the know bodies yeah you you see she... they they're making a point to show that it's her but you don't know who she is mm-hmm. until she starts reading she starts and reading then you the get story the whole and, thing, and, and then, then you find out about that yeah but um that whole even though I may not laugh with you cry with you right I will talk to you whatever you need to know from the bottom of my heart I love you I love you that was some yeah, that was that some was, yeah, I was yeah. getting teary eyed. That was deep. Rewatching that was deep. it because 
I say all the time that the power of love, the power of hope, and all that kind of stuff can really persevere. And it's real easy to get pessimistic and real mm-hmm. easy to get um, distraught. And if you don't believe me, listen to our Man of Steel episode where I talk <laughs> about John Kent being all distraught and pessimistic. But um, when that moment is said, to think that somebody still had that in their heart after their head being shaved, after knowing, she said several times, like, I know I'm going to die here. Mm-hmm. Every bit of me. It's going to be gone and no one's ever going to know anything about me. I, she says, what, well, right? Like, if I'm going to write my autobiography, if, if I'm going to die, like, I'm going to tell my story or something mm-hmm. at one point. On toilet paper. So you still have this defiance. You still have the, you still have this sense of humor. You still have this hope. I mean, granted, she had to, like, at least think of the next person that was going to be. Well, well, I mean, she did. I think that's crazy. Or that whoever she did, had the But thing I feel to like look. she didn't, right? Hmm. She didn't have to okay. leave nothing for nobody. Right, right. She can let it be what it is, but in doing this, she's now sparked a flame. Right. And, and at the moment, we f- we're thinking that the, the flame being sparked is Evie, and it is Evie mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. But ultimately, when it originally happens, it's the flame that gets sparked in V. Where V, because um, these things motivate Evie to not give up, on, give up V or any of the information on V, right? Mm-hmm. And then... Or at least to keep the hope. In a way. Yes. I like And stand up. And so they're like, okay, so we're going to take you to the back and we're going to shoot you. Yep. And she's like. And then they, right. they come to get her in the, in the morning to go I'm, shoot her. I'm ready. <laughs> and she's like, I'm ready. And he's like, just say anything. If you just tell him anything about this guy, they'll let you go, whatever. Mm-hmm. And he's like, she's like, no, I'd rather get shot. I'd mm-hmm. rather go to the Let's back. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and um, he goes, well, then you're free. And then walks away. So I would like you now to tell me how you feel from here, from going here on, here like, on out, because okay, so, I've already seen this. So I, when that happened, I was thinking, okay, this was V, because uh-huh. the, the voice kind of a little sounded a little too familiar. Right. So um, I'm thinking she's about to walk out, and I feel like he's already had his hallway scene off camera. Yeah, his yeah. own daredevil hallway scene where you just oh he reckon, just he's freeing yeah, her and he's she's just freeing her and from... she's just gonna walk out scot free okay with no problem in the slow pace that she's about to walk out the room in right and then to only walk out and then see the see a guard there and then walk up to the guard and poke it or touch it and then it's just uh, like a mannequin dressed in yeah. guard clothing yeah. you know what I mean and yeah. then she walks and walks and then Ends up in the same room that she was at with. You know, yeah, the shadow. That gallery. was yo. That was that was crazy. I was. I didn't, how much room you got in there, dude? <laughs> <laughs> like the shadow gallery. Yeah. Um. Same thing happens in the comics, except she dates Gordon, and Gordon is not somebody who works at a police station. He's like a former criminal, I want to say. Mm. And so she runs off. Uh, she dates Gordon, and um. Gordon does get killed. But when she goes to go get revenge on his killer, mm-hmm. uh, they do the whole kidnapping with, with V and stuff. And, and that's the thing that bugged me out. She got got, shaved the head, mm-hmm. and then it was all that. It was all there, like what was all in there? the shadow gallery around the corner. Oh from yeah, the sh- yeah, down no, the, hall the same, the same. Gallery. Yeah, everything went well. The idea, and also the idea that she never identified that it was him. Right, this idea that. He must be wearing different masks or make maybe hoods mm-hmm. or all kinds of weird things where she could not tell it was him. Um, and I mean, with their interactions, there's no reason for her to think it would be him. Right. At the point where there's no reason for us to think it would be him. I didn't think it would be him at, until she started to walk out and then ended up in the shadow gallery. If you watch it now, it's so clear that there's no faces. To right, right, her. right, right. When they're I interrogating her. That, I was like, I'll probably go home and watch that little part. Wow. Yeah, when you're they're interrogating her, you don't see any faces. Mm-hmm. You just see somebody standing in front of a thing, you know. So he's got accents and he's got theatrics. So you know that this is this could be right up V's uh, corner now that you know him a little bit more. But it also goes when you put this in combination to what he did with the Bailey and what he wants to do eventually with Parliament. Mm-hmm. It also goes to show how far he's willing to go for this message, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he's. Do you believe him when he said that there were many times he wanted to stop? That while he did this to her, there was many times he wanted to stop, but she kept, he kept seeing in her the fire that motivated him to do this in the I first place. I think so, only because he took a liking to her a lot. Yeah. But the only. Do you think that would have been good enough for you a, at the time if you were to tell in you a, that? In a weird, <laughs> in a weird way, I want to say if this makes sense, um, because she didn't give him up, he I didn't give up on her. 
Isn't that weird? No, I think you know I think I know. Mean? I think you're right. Her willing her willingness to not give up made him almost want to push it even more, even or more, even wanna... to to enforce that what he started to believe, which is that she would not give in. Mm-hmm. And the more he wanted to almost prove, so that it she almost give so it, her in. being that way almost motivated it motivated, motivated, him. motivated him, or even just like like get, gave him that extra push. I want to say, yeah. You know what I mean? So um, I I think it was I want to say it was that. That's how yeah. I felt about that. Huh? No, yeah, I, I definitely agree. I think um, I my jaw dropped when when she he said that, and when it happens in the comics, it's is done with the same shock, because in the same way in the comics, when he first sees her, he addresses her like there's nothing wrong. Right, 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 right. Like he there's didn't no do I, there's no I can explain. Yep. There's no I'm glad. He just says like hello. Or whatever, and she flips out. And even though everything he says might be sincere, it's really hard for me to believe that I would believe it. Like we'd be fighting, right, right, right. But then again, I haven't eaten in a while because the rat, <laughs> the rat has been. Uh, you oh no! Nah, they out. gave us the shot where the rat didn't even want to. Yeah, that, so he went right back into the hole. Yeah, he <laughs> that. You got to think about how horrible the bathroom situation was, all that kind of stuff, and he had all that on deck, mm-hmm. ready. That's crazy. Um. But he basically says that there, there, there is no real jail because the real jail is her fear mm-hmm. that these things will actually happen to her. But now that she's actually experienced it and chose death, she realized that she has nothing to fear and therefore has more con- control over her own life. Do you believe that? Um, you probably don't believe that you don't have to go through all that to, <laughs> to get there. But how do you feel about believing that once you've mastered what your biggest fears are, uh, you have more of a chance to... I, I like to think the things that that she believed in were more worth it after that. Because yeah. if you, because it's got it's got to be whatever. It's still better than I guess. Well, not better than I don't want to say better than dying. Well, she didn't want to die. She wanted well, to die. She she wanted to die, but she just it wasn't worth it. Yeah, you know what I mean. So um, I would think uh, that weighed more. I can see that. And that there is a lot of weight in everything that V's doing because he seems to think of this all clearly. And he also reveals that that woman, those notes were real. Mm-hmm. That that he got those those notes given to him. And that's why he put her in that position to almost be live in his shoes mm-hmm. for a little bit. And experience what broke him or freed him. Broke, gave him that extra him push and it him. pushed her. And or maybe you had to be broken to be to free. To see or that in like somebody else. Kind yeah. of was like, you know, yeah. Um, and so they do a, like the scene where she goes outside and gets, catches the rain and stuff. And they do it in the comic too, but she's completely naked. No. And I guess she just feels great about it. But what's funny is that eventually she just comes by and is like, I'm leaving. I yeah. think I'm just going to... And he didn't, stop, he didn't thanks, stop her. Thanks for all this. this for the extra you know, push. Yeah, I'm by tough, the way. I'm tough now. So I, I, I'm, I, just I gonna, could, I'm just going to go. Split. And um, she continues to live a life uh, out there where they, she says that no one recognizes her anymore because supposedly whatever he did to her changed her mm-hmm, fundamentally. Changed her. And um, that she basically... Because she was unrecognizable, can continue living a regular life. But she comes back to CV to find out um, basically how he's doing and, and getting ready for the 5th of November, which is coming up, where he says he has his biggest plot. This is basically yeah. the day before. Yeah. <laughs> how do you feel about her coming back? Um, I liked her coming back. I also liked what, he, what she told, what she had told him when she was at the grocery store. Yeah, and um, she and the coworker of hers, a former coworker of hers, was behind her, and she had, and she was so nervous that she had dropped her money, and the coworker went to go pick up her money for her, and gave it right back to her, looked straight at her, and didn't even recognize her. Didn't even recognize her. She's like, yeah, and after that, I knew I was good. Yep. Um, there's more, there's there's heartbreak in this that is not, or I don't remember much from the comic, where. He gets angry the first time she leaves. Mm. Remember, he like breaks a mirror. Oh or yeah, something. he breaks a mirror and then he kind of sobs and stuff like and that. And yeah. she, you know, tries to kiss him. I do think the kiss on the mask happens. Yeah, uh, I like the kiss times. on the mask. But 
How do you feel about Evie falling in love with her? Like, kind of captured her, her. Like, do you see V as completely black and white at this point? Like, he's completely on the side of good? No. Because I think Frank... Still not. I mean, I'm... I think he's just... Just so down for the for his right. cause. He's you know radical. what I mean? He's a, he's a radical. So, yeah. um... I would I... I, I want to say... Well... So you you think you you think that uh, you can't really judge him based on his convictions because he 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 is convicted like he this is something he's going to do right and the this fact is, that he this is the only thing I've seen I've seen him do no no yeah you're you right. know what I mean yeah like he's he's like you said he's down for the cause he's right. he's a radical this is for the mission there's no all the stuff that he's done is for the mission is, and it's yeah. it's so little in comparison to what he thinks is going to it's going to bring. Right, mm-hmm. these are small sm- sacrifices in the overall big change that he's trying to bring mm-hmm. um, into the world. So I can see, I can see that. But he's clearly seen that anyone could be a casualty at this point, right? Like, right. Um, and speaking of which, we get Finch, and Finch basically drops the whole. Uh, I like to call this scene the end of Saw scene, because you know how at the end of every Saw. It's revealed that everything that you knew was wrong. Right, and, right, uh, right, secretly, right. And secretly, these people were related, and it was all a plot, and we should have been paying attention. Right. Uh, they do the whole thing where he goes, can I ask you something? If your government, you know, was lying to you, would you want to know about it? If, the, if your government was behind a cover-up where it killed, like... And if so, who? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and he, he basically, it's revealed a hunch that he has that... Um, the virus that got spread and the government that uh, rose up afterwards and saved the day are connected. Mm-hmm. That basically that government is the one that created the virus, spread it, killed everybody, and then miraculously had the cure. And so everybody was so gracious that they were willing to elect these people. And to keep them where Keep they're them at. safe. Because uh, like, in case something to, else yeah, happens. To elect them and keep them where they're at. Yeah. In power. You know what I mean? So Elect them, keep them in power. It's just for the trade-off that they'll be kept safe. safe. Because last time something like this happened, you guys all had the cure. So why not? Mm-hmm. And um, we, you see whole families. You know, like I said, you see that little girl. Like people who are living in this society and they're fine. Because I guess of the, the that illusion of being safe. When in actuality their government is preying on them. Um, and when it is revealed that they were down for this and Prothero had bought stock in a drug company. Oh, yeah. And so he, they got crazy rich and, um, you know, crazy, you know, corrupted and, uh, you know, all this, all this, uh, low down cover up stuff comes out about North fire and St. Mary's, uh, and, it's like the only one that was there that knew about it was V and everybody was just getting, everybody else was just getting there. Right. And then they talk to that guy. They think, they, they think they're talking to one of the guards or something. Remember? Mm-hmm. And they meet a man in the, at the, at the memorial. Yeah. Right. And it turns out that that guy was V was because, v all the time. because, um, that guy has been dead mm-hmm. for like four years or something. Like, like 20. That. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 20 years, something like that. Some, some long amount of time. But. Once this, this is the other big twist, I think, that comes out, right? This idea that the government would do something that would enact a reaction in us so strong that we would give them all the strength and power to do so. And it reminds me of all the people who say that 9-11 was a conspiracy. Right. Right. All this idea that the government would do something to its own citizens to spark them into a revolution. Uh, it happens also in the Hunger Games. At the end of that trilogy, something happens uh, brought on by the, by you know, their own revolution to create martyrs and to create a situation to that that would garner sympathy and stuff. Um, it's a pretty dark turn, but uh, I th- I think in the comic, there was no kind of cover-up or conspiracy. They just went hard, super hard on conservative... Conservatism? Conser- anyway. <laughs> they went super hard on the hard-line beliefs. Right. You know, um, like racial purity and all that kind of stuff. And people just started to want to follow something that that was direct and had strength and power in numbers. And so everyone joined this hateful group. Whereas in the film, they were seen as saviors because of this um, strength through unity, unity through faith uh, stuff that Sut- Sutter? Sutler? Sutler. Sutler is going through. But then Finch rightfully predicts that the next step after 
the government does all this when a terrorist comes out for revenge is that he's going to spark a revolution and somebody's going to do something stupid. Stupid. And we see an image of the little girl um, motivated by V with his mask on spray um, a V on one of the posters and get shot. Uh, and then seemingly, even though he's a cop, right, society right, right. is ready to tear him to shreds. I thought Which was, they do, yeah. I thought that was kind of an emotional and like raw kind of scene. Yeah, like, that kind of was. Because that is what would happen. Like, society only needs so much to see so much. And right. I do think that people think that once society sees blatant um, preying on people. Yeah, and disregard that, for everything else. Then we will fight our governments back. But we haven't seen that black and white evidence yet and so to see it there okay wow they're really not here for us and then they're killing our kids out here um and it sparks a revolution that anyone could be under these masks anyone could be v um but the 5th of november is around the corner and even with everything sparking up v decides that he's gonna break a deal and he talks to creedy he visits your man creedy who's who's over there uh gardening and you kind of see that scene. Remember where they have, they're listening, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. the music's up. But the music's up. And they're watching, but they're in the corner. So that, that, that's an example of what goes on throughout the entire book, where there's people constantly listening and constantly uh, watching. They're called the eyes, ears, and the nose. Huh. <laughs> um, but you get this situation here where, the, you know, Creedy seems to be the scum that's locking everybody up. But mistakenly, you got, uh, not mistakenly, but... Even with Creedy, they're locking everybody up. V shows up, and not to kill him, but to make a deal. But to make a deal. Give me Adam Sutler, because you are smart enough to know that if I get through with my plan, you're going to be fired and probably killed. Yep. So give me your boss before your boss fires you, and then me and you can shoot the fair one. Me and you can, can square up. You can have me. Uh, were you surprised by that? Did you think Creedy was going to bite? Did you think that uh, V had something up his sleeve? Um... No, nah, I, I. You think towards, it's willing towards, to give up? Towards halfway of the movie, I already knew the end game was gonna be Sutler. Okay. Um, at some point, he was gonna have to get to Sutler. Okay. At uh, somehow, some way. So, um, I was real interested in how he was gonna do it. I thought he was gonna kill Creed right there. Yeah. But um, I, especially with the music on and stuff. Yeah, with the music on. So once he threw the music on, I already thought it was over. I didn't think he was gonna strike a deal with him though. Yeah. So um but I kind of thought if you did strike it, strike strike the deal with him, I think you're going to get dealt with anyway. That whole branch. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's going to get dealt with anyway. Yeah. Yeah, and you got to think would you trust V in that yeah. moment? Um if I'm him to save my own behind, probably. Yeah, right. You know I'm, I mean? I'm also thinking that too cuz at first I was thinking, well, this guy's a vigilante, why should I trust so him? So I give him what he wants and he'll leave me alone. But if and you, maybe if you I take, feel, maybe I take Sutler's seat. Yeah, if you, if <laughs> you, know? you feel your head was really gonna be on the spike, you know, then. And and he kind of did trick him in a sense because he already knew he was gonna be able to handle them in a sense. If that was the case. Yeah. So we see that Sutler decides he's gonna do a broadcast right mm-hmm. uh, on the fifth of November mm-hmm. to let everybody know, like, chill out, don't do none of this craziness, and he's screaming at the top of his lungs. About order and, what and I like, chaos. What I like about that is, um, is um, there's a, there's a curfew out, yeah. But on the, on every single TV screen that they show, wherever the TV is, there's nobody inside of the inside of the building. There's nobody in, at home, yeah. and Stuff like that, you know. So it's like, where is everybody? It's funny because um, I thought that that, that was pretty cool. The idea that because I think there's a scene, the scene earlier on, right before. Uh, v takes over the network. I want to say there's a scene that shows that everyone's watching TV everywhere at yeah, all times, at all times, or whatever. I- and so the odds are, if Sutler's gonna portray this message of hate against V, he'd be able to catch up the whole, capture the whole audience. Mm-hmm. But no, nobody's in front of their TVs. Everyone's got their V mask on. Yeah, their guy already, It's already masks. too late. The revolution has already started. But I think well, what's funny is that that's also kind of dramatic because people don't just walk out of their houses with their TVs on. Right? <laughs> like I'll show you. I'm just gonna walk out on you. But what's crazy, and and I thought it was kind of a cool little bit of filmmaking, is that um, you have the scene of Sutler there arguing and screaming for, uh, you know, to stop the revolution that 
V is is trying to start, and he's kind of getting a little bit of Hitler Hitler vibes, you know? Yeah, a little, a little bit. bit of, a little bit of dictator dictator, you know, uh, banging on the desk vibes. I thought, uh, like I said, uh, John Hurt killed it, looking like paranoid and tired and over it. But what I thought was cool that James McTeague did is the thing ends, right? The while this is going on, and while you're seeing this, and it's cutting between uh, the speech and the emptiness that no one's listening, mm-hmm. you then find out that this wasn't even live. Right, it was taped. It was because taped. because Creedy brings uh, Adam Sutton yeah, to so the... When he, he takes him out the bag, he takes him out the, the black bag, it's like, oh, but then it makes Spe- sense because half of the stuff is taped anyway, so... Yes, yeah, so the, the speech just ends, and but at the same time, in real time, uh, Adam Sutler is being masked, and he unmasked from his knees. He, he he was under one of Creedy's black bags. Mm-hmm. Creedy did sell him out, captured him, and brought him to V. And smacked that, him across the head with, with a foreign object Yep. before he got there. In hopes of getting uh, V and being the hero, right? He would have mm-hmm. been the one to ca- capture the uh, the terrorist. The terrorist. They constantly are calling him the terrorist. Terrorist. I also thought that it was cool at one point in the movie that they were like, we have surveilled everyone and the people are... Speaking I didn't 40. think I didn't think Creed was gonna deliver. You know what I mean? Because yeah, it's like kidnapping the president, dude. <laughs> I, I did sense. like when they were listening in and they were like, uh, "The terrorist has forty percent more of approval." Like we've been listening <laughs> in, yeah, we've been right, listening right, in right. I heard that. I heard that. And people were talking about him forty percent more positively mm-hmm. than they were last week or whatever. Like it just shows you. So like, it's like oh, hey, it's metric, working. Yeah, yeah, the, the metric you can working. see that something's growing. So when you get to that point, um, there. Uh, you you also see that while V is dealing with this situation with Creedy that the the revolution has started that people are starting to walk towards Parliament um, in their Guy Fawkes masks mm-hmm. and hats um, and but there seems to be a militant army ready to stand them down shoot them if necessary uh, v, right before well Creedy kills Sutler, Sutler right yeah. So he shoots, him right, shoots him right in the head and he says bollocks I want to say he says bollocks and then he shoots him in the head. And um, then Creedy's like, all right, V, you said, you know, you go. And he's like, nah. Like, he said, oh, like, now take off your mask. And he's like, nope. And he's like, wow, you really about to make this hard? Right. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, nah, you're not about to get me. He goes, what are you going to do with your silly knives and your karate gimmicks? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Which is a line from the comic. I thought that was pretty funny because it's like, yeah, you probably just hear about this weird guy who does karate and stabs people. In the comic books, he killed several people with pressure points. Wow! Like he just, you could tell, like it wasn't a stab, but there was right. a puncture here, right, right, and it it killed him. Uh, so he does have that whole karate thing down. Um, and he says, you know, we'll just you you have all that. We have guns. Right. And he he handles. It. He and handles. He says it right. He says. He, we have guns, like right. we have, like bro, and he handles to the guards first. Yeah, he I says, guess like as a warning. He says we have guns. Uh, he goes, no, all you have are bullets, and the hopes that you shoot me because if you not, if you didn't, I'm gonna I'll kill, kill you, you all before you before reload. You got time to reload. <laughs> now, when you heard that, did you think that he was like? No, but I thought I thought. Let's see what you let's see let's see what you got. Because <laughs> it, it also reminds me of in Star Wars. Uh, Obi Wan Kenobi says, "Like strike me down, and I shall become more powerful than you shall ever imagine." And then he gets stopped, struck down, and nothing happens. So I didn't know right. if it was like he was just trying to talk up and stuff. But he then become he gets turned into Swiss cheese. Mm-hmm. They lay it works into through him. everybody before everybody can get to. Well, first they you shoot him. Yeah, they, they, they shoot lay him. into. They him. light him up. You see blood uh, splattering holes through this guy. And what I liked is that scene, you know, they do a close up on the mask and they show him, like, take like a pained breath. Right. And he, like, gets, a, you know, he is in pain. It shows that he is human. Whatever the serum or whatever is done to right, him right. has at least, I mean, worked to some extent. That, and yeah. you also kind of believe in, like, it's his will. Right. Right? Like, he's this close and all he has to do is get Creedy because he also tells Creedy that he's going to kill Creedy with his bare hands. hands bro- he's going to choke him. <laughs> he's going to end with his hands. He's like, I think he's going to end. He's like, my with my hands, hands wrapped around your neck. neck. <laughs> Yeah, but then everyone shoots, and after he's done, he basically says, like, my turn or whatever, pulls out his blade and just massacres yeah, that was Ill. That everybody. Was and through the speed force, basically, <laughs> uh, he uses the speed force to hack and slash his way to, Creedy. Through, uh, to straight to Creedy, who then 
on his own takes a couple shots with a magnum yeah. right to uh, V before V just grabs him up anyway. And he's like, I'm just an idea. Yeah, you know? I like how he told him ideas are bulletproof. Yeah, he's like, how? <laughs> he's like, because I'm just an idea. I'm not a man, I'm an idea. Ideas are bulletproof. And he uh, chokes him out. Yeah, snaps his neck right there. Uh, he chokes him first and then snaps his neck. Not. I thought he was just going to choke him, choke him. Yeah, me too, but I me think too. he just wanted to make sure. And then he basically limps all the way to the train station where he's hooked up an entire train to blow up right underneath Parliament. Um, in the comic, is the Prime Minister's home. Mm. Uh, but um, Or his residence, whatever. And he gives Evie the choice. Right? He dies... She says, I don't want you to die. He's like, that's the sweetest thing anyone's ever told me. Mm -hmm. um, and he gives her the choice, right? He says, because my sense, vengeance you kinda, dies. You got to kind of think he was going to, that was the plan all along in a way. It does, did you th do you think? Do you I, think I when he, so, when he met like her he in the... I feel like he had that type of foresight, man. No, I think that's you know interesting. I mean? You think when he met her in the alley? Oh, no, no, no. I, I feel like right before he went to go handle Creedy. Okay. You know, and... um. I felt like he was he knew he was gonna give her that choice. Yeah. But No, I, that makes sense. But I don't think it was that yeah, he thought about it that that far. That far back. Yeah. Um but what he says is kinda true. He says like my revenge ends with Tweety. Like once I kill him, that's when yeah, that's my it. story ends. If you want to spark further, you know, um because he would have killed, like I said, he killed Sutler, mm -hmm. killed Prothero, kill um uh Creedy, uh Killed, um, I mean, you have priest. to think he left it up to chance. Well, I, I do believe that he can, quote unquote, die happy. Right. Knowing that his chapter of anarchy is done. And that even if hers isn't, I want to think that he thinks he sparked enough change that somebody will mm. eventually pick it up. He's just asking her, you know, he's just giving her the literally the button um, to press if she wants to. But... I do think that he believes that it will be pressed anyway because he mm. knows what's going on. He knows that he's sparking something uh, here. But they give V, my boy V, a, a Viking funeral. Yeah. With the train. And um, Finch shows up to step lock up. Step away. To lock up. Uh, in the comics, Finch, Finch goes to Lark Hill. Mm -hmm. And he's like, if I want to think like a criminal, I got to be a criminal or something like that. And he takes LSD. And the LSD opens up something in his mind right. that allows him to uh, to see like a criminal or whatever the heck that whatever any of that's supposed to mean. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, you get the flashback there. Yeah, yeah. But that's about it. Mm -hmm. But Finch in this is given way more to do, and he's way more of a, a sympathizer. Like he, once he once he realizes that the government might be lying mm -hmm. or uh, taking advantage of his people, he's kind of already quick to start defending V, or at least. Um, you know, Creedy at one point comes to him and says that people are worrying that he's the mole. That he might be the one helping V. And um, there's a lot of pressure put on him. But I think ultimately, and we see it, when he corners yeah, Natalie Cortman. They him about his loyalty. Yeah, when they question, when, when they corner Natalie Cortman, Cortman, Cortman about all this, she, um, you know, he pretty much has her dead to rights, right? Mm -hmm. And he lets her do it. Because right. I think at that lowers, point. Lowers his gun. I think at that point. He um, he was just done. He was ready to throw the whole government away mm -hmm. <laughs> because of everything that he found out. And uh, I cannot blame him, but he le it happens. You hear the beautiful music. V gets his send off, and a um, um, uh, group of people in masks just cross the, everything. Yeah, cross past the, the barriers, cross the army, uh, and it's inspiring and it's uplifting. Uh, and yeah. That was that. That's basically how that film goes. How do you think about that third act? There usually it's not. It's a big thing. Um, but I was a fan. I was a fan of the um of him handling um Creedy. Um, yeah, but that was very comic so, book movie ish, right? Yeah. Um, but more so of the. I didn't think he was gonna spark a whole big thing like that. Um, because you can tell you can um, I think I think the guards were scared for their life. Once you saw all those people coming with masks <laughs> yeah. and, and stuff like that, so they were ready. They were ready to shoot. So the fact that they weren't, they weren't able to take any orders from anybody anywhere at that point because everybody was already was already thinking. And you, you have to think about that. Like V kind of wanted, also knew that in a way, in a sense. Or he, he would so at least figure. I mean, th that's an idea. It's the idea that, and I, I'll use this example, right? 
When I was a kid, I used to believe that if I was anywhere on the street, when the when the green light came on, I oh. would get run over by a car. Right. Right? Because green means go mm-hmm. and cars go. And if so, if I'm halfway through crossing the street before the green light comes on, I might as well not because I'm just going to die. Mm-hmm. I never at once factored in the human behind that car. And what decision that human was going to make when they realized that I'm halfway across the street. And they could probably just slow down a little bit before I get up fully across the street. You know, mm-hmm. they don't have to maintain their speed. And it's that same idea with these guns, right? Mm-hmm. If these were robots, as soon as these people came up, everyone gets gunned down. Right. But we forget that there's also humans on that side too. Mm-hmm. And not every human wants to do exactly what they're told or exactly what the government says. They all want to do what's right. But sometimes laws are not right. Mm-hmm. Does that makes sense. Uh, and so you gotta kind of use judgment, yeah, their own, well, your own judgment, and human judgment gets put up yeah. on the line. And that when you get human judgment, you get human benefit of the doubt. And so I think you're saying that we may have given the uh, military benefit, benefit of the doubt, of the doubt. Yeah. hoping that they wouldn't just gun through people. But right. knowing be how he is, I don't really think he cares. <laughs> I At think that point, he's already gotten his part- revenge. I think, but yeah, I think Parliament would have gotten blown up and. Uh, his revenge is taken and what anyone else wants to do after this and whatever happens after this. Because right. there will be crackdowns after this. If if there was a stronger government and if there was a stronger thing in place and, you know, things got tied down really tighter after this, you know, right. there will be repercussions that V will not be able to lead right, right. Uh, in the future. <laughs> in the comics, Evie takes up the mantle. Oh, she does? And then, yeah. She, you see her, you see V... Do the bomb thing, and then she takes off the mask, and it's her. Oh. Um, and so she then, I think, also tries to um, recruit and train one of the uh, detectives that are trying to help find V the whole time mm-hmm. to be V. Hmm. So you got a whole successor to that whole to that whole idea. But I think the movie kind of just gives them that moment, that one moment of revolution, and it's the spark of hope, the same spark of hope that I guess was felt in that in the jail cell uh, that has caused a lot of murders at this point <laughs> but uh yeah the idea that rebellions are built on hope and that we just need to hold on a, uh to our integrity as people and not give in too much to fear i think all those messages uh, still stand but especially with those tweaks that they made they speak very much to what we're dealing he- with here uh in america right that's how why i always why i also said if they wanted to they could come out with that today or you can at least do a reboot right and you can already see what things they would change right yeah oh yeah what what (laughs) things that they would make uh you know uh different and it's this whole idea that i think that the the common um person doesn't want to think that anyone's taking advantage of them let alone the people that we trust Mm -hmm. elect um and our tax money goes to but alan moore definitely considers himself an anarchist and um v V felt kind of like a you know kind of like a freedom fighter, not more right. like a terrorist, right? He, right. Like he, a took the, he took the responsibility in his own hands, in a sense. You know? Yeah, he did, and he was hope, basically hoping that uh, England would do the same, that England would prevail. Ooh, like that. Uh, yeah, but Alan Moore still didn't see the movie. Uh, thought it was trash. Wow. So it read the screenplay. Wow. Said he didn't like it. Uh, said that they changed too much, hmm. and that they didn't get the point of the movie. Wow. Um, okay. But in all fairness, the biggest thing that he didn't like was the changes that they made to make it seem more current events. What, really? Yeah, because I guess he thought his thing was general enough to fit everything. To fit everything. And so when you start tweaking it and making the government actually evil, like the I government, mean, the I mean, government stuff, get people to relate in a sense. If you especially if we're really that. going through it, right? Yeah, like, might real. as well, might as well point it in that direction. I don't see a reason why not. But um, Adam Moore, like I said, he didn't like Watchmen either or any of that kind of stuff. Um, but that is how Moore goes with that. What do you think? I mean, if you created some, some kind of story, some kind of work, how would you feel if someone paid you outright for it, millions of dollars, but decided that they can change whatever that they want? Um, as I, I'd be okay as long as the main message gets across. I mean, I just feel like he's being nitpicky in a sense yeah yeah uh he probably would want a shot for shot remake right probably if that's how that's how he kind of i mean if that's how you describe it then i feel like 
He's just at least nitpicking. And I and I saw Watchmen for the most part too a couple of times, so I just didn't never haven't read the Watchmen book. Yeah. So it's like, uh, I, I kind of still feel like is it his way or the highway? Do you do you hear the Alan Moore voice in both Watchmen and V for Vendetta? If I told you that that was written by the same person, can uh, you see the maybe a little bit of maybe a thin a line bit, of uh, yeah? Can you see a little bit of Rorschach in, in V or a little bit of uh, you know like what's one more body amongst foundations? You know, there's 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 definitely never compromise. Um, uh, only in the face of Armageddon. Only in the, when you want to blow up a whole building. A lot of yeah, a lot of blowing up buildings in this. Um. But yeah, I thought this was an important film to tackle because I do think that a lot of people forget that it is a comic book film. And when we're, if we're comic book clicking, if we're doing major issues, I think it's important. I want to start going over a lot of these other um, films that have been uh, adapted from comic book works because I think ultimately comic books and movies share the same things where you have the protagonist, the antagonist, you know, the three-act structure, the hero's journey, right. all those kind of things. And I feel like um, Alan Moore had it right where... If it if it's good enough, it's gonna break through, regardless of how right. good or bad the adaptation is. Um, I don't even think he saw Killing Joke. I, I feel like it broke through, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you think DC would? Uh, it's it's hard when you think of comic books and comic book movies. When you I think feel of like it would because... be easier to make now. Well, another thing is also as a one shot, it's it's a little bit difficult, right? When we think of Marvel and mm-hmm. its and its holding ground, is because it's still happening. We're still getting them. Mm-hmm. Um, at one point it'll be a period where it'll be like, okay, that was the Marvel period, right? When all those MCU movies came out, but this didn't even have a period. This was just this film. Yeah, this film. So, um, but it, I like I said again, when we talk about the popularity, you only gotta look as far as the masks, right? That's that's what I go. That's what I really reference to. To yeah. So I mean, I wonder how Mister Moore feels about that. Yeah, and that's why I also say you're kind of nitpicking. Yeah. Like, don't come for me, Alan Moore. I just want to prefix it with that. No, I'm just yeah. Like, you don't want him to come for you. He prays he, to a the snake movie, god. The movie made an impact. Yeah, he has. A, he prays to a snake god. <laughs> so I don't think you necessarily want to uh, get on that man's bad side. But I think it, yeah, I think it was a good movie. I definitely got. Um, it, it didn't feel like those early two thousands superhero movies for me. But I also feel like the comic book didn't read like a normal capes and hmm. cows kind of affair. Interesting. It felt very real and grounded, even though V was kind of superhuman. When did the comic come out? In 88, I want to say. It came out in... It's from 82 to 89. Hmm. The first episodes appeared from 82 to 85. In a British anthology uh, comic called Quality Communications, but then the publishers canceled and DC picked up, I guess the rest the bill and the rest of it. Hmm. That is interesting. Yeah. But this is also around the same time as him writing Watchmen, so he's just and Killing Joke. Oh, he's so he's just swinging yeah, for the fences going, here, yeah, for and real. he's uh, killing it. So it sucks that he doesn't think that um that it hit that so it, to speak or that. Oh, it's, it's another thing too, right? We spoke about this with Superman. What if it hits, but it hits because it changed what you were trying to do? Hmm. Right? If it changes the message, or it changes V, or it changes EV, or it changes the government, but makes wild money, then you start thinking like, well, I thought how I had it was just fine, you know? Like, mm-hmm. and, and maybe you should use I that. Guess he, I guess he feels kind of slighted. Yeah, own. like what was wrong with the choices I made when I wrote it? If you want to adapt from it, then why make changes? If you want to make your own, then just straight up make your own. Yeah, people say that some people say the movie was better than the comic. I don't know. I I, I could see him having an issue with that. If that's the case. That the, the people saying the movie was better than the Oh, you think it would be like a jealousy thing? Yeah, no, because I, I think you would just keep your uh, name on it, right? Because he said, basically, um, he said he had read the script and he said the movie turned into a Bush era parable about people too timid to set a political satire in their own country. So first he first he got mad because it was made by Americans and mm-hmm. we didn't make it about America. We kept oh, it in Britain when he was a I, British I guess, He was a I British guess. guy and he made it about Britain. He was bold enough to be like, my country screwed up 
and has been screwed up and can get more screwed up. And all so, right, all right. And you know what? I'm gonna start nitpicking on him now. No, I mean, I think, <laughs> I think there's both sides. I think there's there's two sides of this because. I've essentially, had this film not be made, I would probably not know about this book unless somebody urged me to read it. And I know that's a shame, um, but we're, we're growing our comic book community here as part of Comic Book Click, so I'm getting turned, you know, uh, uh, turned on to things, you know, little by little. And we're trying to pass that knowledge on, and that's why we do a movie like this to bridge that gap between what we don't know are adapted work from comic books, but then you still got people who won't think it in the purest form uh have we done a book and movie that you've both read and watched wow i'm gonna have to go through the list we're gonna have to go through the list (laughs) on that one Hmm. well it's we are we a whole lot of episodes because this is episode 52 Ooh, 52 and it's a and it's a dc joint check that out Uh, look at that it comes all the way around it comes all the way around, um, but yeah, maybe maybe they. You think they'll ever redo this? I mean, it's been you said it's been some time. I think you like give it 13, another. 13 if Watchmen years. is getting a series, I give it another ten years before V for Vendetta gets picked up as something. And there were actually rumors that some British channel was going to pick it up as a miniseries, hmm. and then all those rumors died. But who knows? Maybe they do a, a V for Vendetta ten episode. You know, like gritty like, Daredevil Netflix, like those, like those purge, those purge things on yeah, TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The mini, mini event, mini series, or whatever. I think it'd be pretty cool. And maybe, I mean, Adam Moore's still alive. Maybe he can oversee it if he if he cares that much about it. Like if he that would be good. Cares that much about the quality right? of it. <laughs> I mean, you might as well, might as well get into it. Oh, but it felt good getting into this. And you know what we're gonna be getting into next? Ooh, next is the tell. annual. The CBC annual, the major issues annual, it will be it's our birthday. The, fill, the full one year mark for the major issues podcast, which is brought to you by Comic Book Click. And we are ecstatic. We're trying to get um, all hands on deck, all uh, all opinions. If you guys want to write in, um, ask questions or, or just it's just going to be a full on conversation next week when we just sit and just. Kind of relax on all th- and, and re- reminisce on all things major issues. We've talked about everything at this point. It seems like, but yet still haven't scratched the surface on so much, which means we got big, big, big things coming our way, your way, uh, come 2019, which I am extremely excited about. Mm-hmm. But if you do want to go back to our back catalog and check out some, well, we have a Watchmen review. Me and Dan, the comic man, were able to sit here and tear apart Watchmen, another Alan Moore um, adapted work. Uh, if you want to go back and look at those episodes, like the Watchmen episode, or maybe you're more a uh, fan of the Kick-Ass films, the MCU films, the stuff in the DCEU, we're trying to cover... I mean, we did Spawn Image Comics. We have it all as part of the Major Issues podcast. And if you want to find the Major Issues podcast, all you have to do is search... Major Issues Podcast on Google. We're the first ones that pop right up. If you have an iPhone, it already comes pre-installed, a podcast app. All you have to do is click on that and search for the Major Issues Podcast, and we pop right up. But we're available wherever podcasts are found. That's Podbean, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, Spotify, Google Play, YouTube. Anywhere podcasts are found, we are on it. Uh, But our home is Podbean. At the moment, that's where you can get the exclusive Podbean app and sit there and be able to write in comments onto the show. We're hoping for more listener engagement in the future. And if you want to contact us and engage with us, all you have to do is reach us on our various social media platforms like Facebook.com slash comic book click, Instagram at comic book click, or use the hashtag comic book click to talk about the newest, hottest, latest, and greatest things to come to comic books and comic book media. We have revamped our entire social media. Have you seen this lately? Ooh, Cloudus Maximus? A little bit, a little we bit. We have been on it with the news, we've been on it with the gossip, we've been mm-hmm. on it with the memes. The surprise Pikachu is up there, people. Wow. That reference is not gonna uh, be anything when someone hears that a year from now. <laughs> surprise, surprise Pikachu surprise <laughs> Pikachu but you know literally we're having a blast on there and we're uh, talking to you guys more and more people are coming out of their shells a little bit and discussing some of these things on here like for instance remember how earlier I was trying to give credit to the uh, the director Mr. James McTeague uh, 
I had accidentally on Twitter put that the directors were the Wachowskis, mm-hmm. which are credited for directing the Matrix uh, series of films. Uh, f- former siblings, former brothers, they're now mm-hmm. sisters. It's a thing. But mm-hmm. the Wachowskis, uh, you know, great filmmakers. I thought that they directed this film under further uh, analysis. They only screen wrote it, which basically means that they took Alan Moore's thing and then wrote right. the movie. <laughs> or take Alan Moore's book, wrote the movie, and then gave it to another guy to direct. Uh, and I was quickly corrected. On that note, oh yeah, yeah, but I was mm-hmm. ha- I was happy to d- be corrected because I was happy to know that people are out there keeping tabs on us, keeping tabs on these things, and not letting us, you know, get That's lazy. Cool. Yeah, right, don't right, let us right, get lazy, right, right. It's real easy to get fat. Thanksgiving just passed. I had so much food. It's real easy to get fat and lazy around here. But uh, you guys got to keep us sharp. I've been to the future. We become the latest and greatest things to come to comic books and comic book media, and it's thanks to you guys. So keep liking, sharing, and subscribing, and. Christmas is coming up. You guys want to do something for us that is low cost, low effort. Rate and review us on iTunes. It's the quickest thing that you guys can do uh, to let us know how you think the podcast is going. And it's the quickest way for us to grow as podcasters because we know how to tweak and critique the things that we are doing here as part of the Major Issues podcast. We are one year old. We're still making our baby steps. And I do. I am genuinely enjoying this outlet. I'm genuinely enjoying the research pro- process of coming up with these episodes, looking into some of these interesting backstories, like that stuff with Alan Moore mm-hmm. and um, his film. Um, <laughs> the fact that he don't like uh, people making. Uh, you gotta do it yourself, Alan. Yeah, do it yourself. Alan. If you want, if you want <laughs> <laughs> Alan. <laughs> if you want something done right, you definitely gotta do it yourself. But the research has definitely been worth it. Speaking about it with the members of the clique has been worth it, um, and I hope it continues to be worth it uh, in the future. But. Yeah, I guess all that left to say is, oh, no, no, no. I know what, the, what what's all that left to say. Before we say anything, how do you feel about this whole uh, year anniversary of Major Issues? It's our birthday. Major Issues birthday. So um, I, I hope we get all the, I want all our chairs filled in the studio, so. All of them? Yeah, all of them. Like golden chairs? Go, go, golden chairs? I think that's a stretch. I don't think we have the budget for golden chairs. For all the golden chairs, I think we have the Morbius chairs. How about that? Chairs. I think I think it would only be right if I tried <clears throat> to attempt this. Voila! In view, humble Vaud villain veteran cast vicariously as both villain and victim by the vestitudes of fate. This visage, no mere veneer of vanity, is the vestige of the vox populi, now vacant, vanished. However, this valorous visitation of bygone vexation stands vivified and has vowed to vanquish these venial and virulent vermin, vanguarding vice and vouchsafing? The violent, vicious, and vi- vicarious violation of volition. The only verdict is vengeance, a vendetta, held as a votive not in vain, for the value and veracity of such shall one day vindicate the vigilant and the virtuous. Verily, this vicarity of verbiage veers most verbose, so let me simply add that it is my very good honor to meet you, and you may call me V. But in reality, my name is George Serrano, a.k.a. The Don. Ooh, I am Cloudus Maximus. And this has been our V for Vendetta review. And remember that whether or not you think the government should be big and evil, whether you'd like to overthrow it with your anarchy, whether you like your eggies in a basket, or whether you wouldn't mind us shaving your heads and making you stronger for the betterment of the Major Issues Podcast. Make sure that you're here next week. Make sure you're a part of the annual because we are all V. We're all the click. And you, yes, you are worthy. worthy.